All right, guys. So in case you don't know, we are an affiliate for Soldier Girl Coffee Company. I'm super excited about this because they have amazing coffee. And in future episodes, you will see us drinking Soldier Girl coffee. Uh, they also have a CBD coffee. So if uh, you need um, some CBD, uh, which helps support um, your health in a sense of relaxation, uh, it helps uh, with your, your sleep and your overall health on a day-to-day -day basis, then Soldier Girl Coffee has both that and the caffeine you need. Uh, so be sure to check out the link in the show notes. Uh, go ahead and click that, shop around, and make sure you get yourself some Soldier Girl Coffee today. Welcome to the Business and Brews Podcast, where our mission is to highlight local businesses and shed light on different industries. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Business and Brew Show. I'm super excited. This is the second episode of our relaunch. And uh, today I get to have a good longtime friend of mine and entrepreneur on the show, Fernandez. Uh, so Fernandez, really quick, just uh, tell us who you are and what you do. Uh, well, hi to everyone. Uh, thanks for having me here. And spending some time uh thanks for the interest on 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 the project that we have going on uh you're, you're my friend i know you for a long time and uh well right now my hobby is uh is the goats i have some goats i started with a few the, the numbers been growing and uh, i find it's a pretty interesting uh hobby and some people, I guess, you know, live out of it. Uh, but it's it's a it's a lifestyle. It's something that really different from what we used to do back in the day. Uh, I wanted calm, peace, uh, nature, and I started with some little animals to see, you know, how they develop. How, you know, they're they have a lot of energy. They they need a lot of caring. You need to know how to treat them, and uh, and it's fun. It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's, so, that's good, man. Uh, so you you haven't talked about it, but uh, most of the people, well, all of the people that I've had on this show have been in the United mm -hmm. States, uh, but you are mm -hmm. not in the United States. So talk a little uh -huh. bit about that, because I know you kind of bounce in mm -hmm. between. So tell us oh, about okay. that. Okay. Yes, I uh, I lived in the States for a while, but after, I, I am normally from Puerto Rico, I'm naturally from Puerto Rico, and uh, I have half, my dad is Dominican too, so I have a little bit from Puerto Rico and Dominican too, so in, in my islands, which, you know, I like to call them, uh, I love them both, they're both awesome. Uh, I had met with you in Dominican Republic a long time ago. You were able to experience like uh, the restaurants and the the how the people treat each other. Uh, the nice side of it. It's a really nice yeah. place. People are really nice. The river you went to, like, um, so it it's a place that is not normal for the tourists to go to, and yeah. and some even locals don't know about it. And you you went on on a horse ride and you did some cool stuff, you know, in, in places that are um, hidden. And we're trying to do stuff uh, from that place. We're trying to have it grow in a nice way. Now we have a few more animals and and uh, the place uh, is pretty retired side of the country. Not too many people live around there. So now we're trying to, uh, have more people visit and 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 offer better products. Yeah, it's a family yeah. farm, and and each each family member has their own uh, way to do things in in their sectors. They have different animals. Someone uh, has the turkeys. Uh, we have donkeys, uh, horses, um, chickens, and 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 different types 
uh, types of uh, uh, fruits and vegetables also. So it's a, it's a nice project. So now we're uh, kind of have it growing and with the growth, people from different areas are starting to uh, go and buy what we have to offer and, and they're happy with it. And so we're keeping it that way. And that's good. And it's also, good. also something productive. It's not just, you know, for the sale. It's, it's, you feel good when people are uh, traveling four or five hours because they want to have a, a, your goats. They want to develop that DNA with theirs. And, you know, it, it's you're you're giving something to help them out and, and make them better. Yeah. So you're basically you live in Puerto Rico, but you your goats and like the most of the project is in the Dominican Republic, right? Yes, yes. Uh, the islands you can take a, a trip and it's like an hour and a half, so we're really close to each other. So I can go in the morning and come back in the two three days later. Is normally what I do if I have to go. So I just uh, manage. Um, the numbers, the record, we keep a, a record on Excel. So we have, we know exactly their, their age, their months, everything. So mm. I'm, I'm mainly like tracking the book over here. And I, I have uh, people that help me really uh, a lot. Uh, they're professionals. They've been in this longer than me. And, and we have good communication back and forward. We set up appointments due to the situation and of the virus and everything just for safety. We, we set up appointments whenever we need to receive someone to go pick up an animal or, or whatever they need to do or go look at some animals. So yeah. we try to, um, yeah, protect ourselves and everyone and do things like. Yeah. So I remember when I, we went down there to visit, you had showed us uh, some land. Is that, uh, the land that you're using now for the goats? No, no, no. That land uh, was being used for cows okay. and bulls and, and still being used for that. Uh, we have a different sex sector, which is what we're using for goats. Uh, the goats need special requirements because they will escape from, from, the places you will consider the most secure they, they're the ones that will test your system so we needed to to do special fencing for them on a, on a different place and, and all that and yeah. uh, we have an old river next to the property which is where they're taken throughout the day and they had a variety of plants which help for their for the health and and meat production yeah. they, got, they grow pretty fast yeah that's cool. Um, so how how many uh, goats did you start off with and how many do you have now? Just out of curiosity. Okay. So we started the first time I bought four. Uh, those were the ones that tested the, the fencing. Uh, you don't want to start with a lot because there are poisonous, poisonous plants and you want to test how they will get used to the terrain if they haven't been there. So this this goes had pretty good result. And I made um, different buys from different local owners. I try to get the ones with the best, uh, re, uh, uh, you know, um, reputation, yeah. you know, the best reputation. And that way, uh, I test them. I test them. So some of them didn't do as well as I thought they were going to do to be, because uh, a lot of animal breeders they raise their animals uh, locked, their race their whole life. And so little they lock them up, and that's the way, uh, which is a way to have them keep more of those calories in their body, so mm -hmm. they will grow more because they're not wasting calories running around and. But it's not maybe a, a natural way because, yeah. uh, you know, so everybody does things their own way, whatever space they have, you know, sometimes they, they don't do it like that because they want to. 
It's just the circumstances. Maybe they take them out during the day. A lot of them do. And for some walks, one or two hours, and then back, you know. So, but in, in the way we do it, we, hit, we let them go from 9 a.m. They come back around 11.30. And then in the afternoon, there's another shift of, for about four hours. So they're all day going around eating and exercising. It's like it's a better, it's a healthier way, you know. Yeah. For yeah. So what? I I know there's several different things that you can do with them, but what do people, but your customers that come to you for the goats? What what do they do want mostly from the goats? Are are they wanting to breed them, or they want them for the meat or the milk? Okay. In our case, we have a little bit of everything. We have some purebred, uh, uh, purebred goats and, and Anglo-Nubians, which is uh, milk and meat uh, production. It's dual. And the Anglo-Nubians, yes. We have some boar goats, which are the uh, uh, beef ones, the meat ones. And depending on what people uh, want, that's what we're helping with. Some of them are trying to start a meat business. So we recommend uh, buying goats that have some breed, some like, but we don't recommend to, to buy 100% pure goats because the, co the, the cost is going to be so high that if you're going to sell meat, uh, it, this is not what you want. You want those hybrids, which will be way cheaper and and they have already upgraded. They have an upgrade. You want to buy them young, so that way you can have a lot of years of benefit with them. And and it's also easier for them to adapt to your conditions. So it it depends how you do it. it it's a really interesting uh, thing. Yeah, that's cool, man. Um, so I know. You kind of talked about it a little bit, but when I had talked to you before about like you getting everything started, um, one of my main questions was why goats? Because obviously you said about the cows and the chickens and the horses, okay. so you you chose goats. We we had yes, I saw a lot of different. I was raised in that environment, but when I came to do an I did an analysis and. I realized that this meat has the best the reputation. It's like one of the healthiest the world has to offer so far. And it's one of the first things we as humans did. We lived in, with little goat herds. So, I mean, I'm like in the reproduction rate because my... My family, they do a lot of cows and stuff like that. They have to wait a year for one birth. Mm. And a goat, she's pregnant for five months, and she can give birth up to three. Up to oh, three. Okay. Then you take a few months of of resting and well feeding, and you know, then she recovers, and in about three months, she can be pregnant again. So, so it means that about every eight months. Uh, you can have kids from so it's way faster um they are they can eat so many extra stuff that cows cannot eat uh, if you own cows you have to be cleaning the the area because they there's a lot of stuff that grows that they don't eat but goats eat almost almost everything there's really yeah. really little stuff they don't eat so instead of you paying or you doing that work yourself, cleaning the land, the goats clean the land for you and they, uh, you know, yeah. they help a lot. It's a really, uh, sheep are, are alike. Um, they're different species. They have different chromosomes. P people get them confused sometimes. They look alike, but they're not. And And sheep are more, um easy to deal with they're more cooperative they they will listen to you more than than goats will do goats will climb out of uh, eh, you know they have a lot of energy it's, it's yeah. different 
Yeah. yeah. So how many how, how many people do you have helping you right now? Uh, I have three people right now that are helping me and, and they rotate some days. It's only two of them and and stuff. They they supervise the goats. Every time the goats are out moving around and eating whatever, they're always under supervision that no one, random dog comes and attack the goats or you know we have a, a a dog that protects the goats with us so also with them all the time moving around so when they're outside they have somebody with them they're they're taken care of and that's what we try to do and then the guys okay. take them back and yeah make sure that everything is okay yeah so so basically they stay inside uh if there's no one there to supervise them yes yes and even at night they have they have protection even at night yeah uh, inside the terrain we have the guard dogs and and we have people that live nearby that and everything i go plus on protection we are really lucky we have a good system okay yeah. that's that's good that's nice um what would you say like Because I know when I was down there before, uh, you were still, you know, doing a little bit of research and stuff. Um, but what would you say from then up to now was uh, the hardest part about getting all of this together and up and running? Well, um, you have to do something you like. Something you like. It's not just. Uh, for the money, because if you like it, you're you're giving like something extra out of you. That's that's the best thing I can do because uh, there's people that are just not meant to be around animals or dealing with animals or reading about them because you need to uh, read a lot about bees and stuff that it doesn't interest you. Like, well, you need something else that makes you happy. But um. I, I think it's awesome. I think it's awesome. Anything related to to this field, nature, anything that is like, uh, I don't know that that connection with Earth. Yeah. No, definitely. Um. So you you basically uh, it it sounds like even though you know you kind of grew up around that type of stuff that mm -hmm. you know you still had to learn a lot about the goats. What's mm -hmm. what's something new that you learned about the goats that that's really helped you with your business the especially when it came to the land the less maintenance the mm. less maintenance i have to you have to spend on it uh the better and when it comes to gold they they use that stuff that you normally pay for for as, as food uh you have your fencing needs to your fencing needs to be good probably you spend a little bit more than you for a horse if that's what you were raising yeah you need a uh, better protection for goats you know i think i'm losing you you there there we go yeah i'm here i'm here oh it froze for a little bit yeah just for a second I was like, what happened? <laughs> it's no big deal. Okay. Um, we're really far away, so I guess it's harder on the internet. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. It happens. Um, yeah, so uh, how often would you say that you travel uh, back and forth between Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic? Well, on the perfect world, I would be going twice a year that that's like my main goal um but at least once i try to go and make sure everything is good um but we we use a lot of technology we have a page on websites that we made our main contact through there so mm -hmm. most of our our people are do, are capable of communicating with us uh through them and and that helps out a lot whatever we are we could help them out and 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 yeah communicate that's cool 
Yeah, I'll uh, I'll definitely make sure that all your information is in the show notes. That way, uh, if anyone wants <laughs> if anyone wants goats or maybe has questions about it, they can definitely yeah. get in touch with you. Yeah, or just check out the page. A lot of baby goats people like just follow them. <laughs> There's this like yoga goat now thing, and I haven't seen that or I haven't done that, but. I mean, they're pretty cool animals. I mean, a lot of people follow them just to to see that, check them out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me. It's been a pleasure. And for yeah, talking man. about going with me for a little bit. Take care. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming on. Okay. Bye-bye. All right. Later. This has been the Business and Brew Show, hosted by yours truly, Ryan Smeltz. Edited and produced (laughs) by Ryan Smeltz. Join us on the next episode. Be sure to tell your friends and give us a five-star review. Find other episodes wherever you listen to podcasts.